Hey everyone, I want to have a quick chat about uh, drop shotting for Cobb, you know, it's something extremely fun to do and with a couple of basics, you know, the setup's very simple, it's something very easy and very fun to do, so I'm going to run you through the setup that I enjoy using for these fish. To start off with, we've got the rod, you know, anything from a 10 foot up to 11 foot, this particular rod is the Berkeley Lightning Shock Rod, it's a 10 foot 6, it's a fast action rod, 1 to 4 ounce rating, it's equipped with Fuji O guard, so you've got really good quality stuff. You know, overall a very affordable rod, so it's not something that's going to break the bank. In today's economy, you know, we've got to start looking to spend our money wisely, and bang for buck, this rod is definitely something I, I recommend. Then moving on to the reel, I've paired that up with a little Pen Pursuit 4000 spinning reel. Also, beautiful little reel, something that's not going to break the bank, you know, it's got a full metal body, it's equipped with HT100 drag washers, stainless steel ball bearings, Overall, very, very robust. I'm absolutely loving it. And then I've obviously spooled it up with some 20 pound Berkeley X9 braid. Depending on the conditions and the area that you're fishing, I wouldn't suggest going anything more than 40 pound. You know, 40 pound plus is just gonna be a bit on the heavy side and you're not gonna get that casting distance that you really need. Because sometimes these cob like to sit in the holes which are quite far out, so you need to be able to get those long casts and get into those zones, otherwise you're not gonna get the bites and you're not gonna get the fish that you're looking for. So, yet again, depending where you are fishing, there's two different uh, styles that we can use here. You can obviously use your open jig head, or you can go for a weedless rig like I've got going here. And very, very basic. What I've got here, obviously this is my leader line, which is a Berkeley 100% fluorocarbon leader material. I go anything from a 40 pound up to a 60 pound. So a 0.61 millimeter up to a 0.74 millimeter. Just yet again, depending if you're fishing in heavy rocks or heavy structure, you wanna go on your thicker side, uh, just so those fish don't actually burn you off on the rocks and all of that. If you're fishing more open areas, more sandy holes, then you can go for the lighter line. There's no need to go on the heavier stuff. But what I've got here is an owner beast a beast twist lock hook, you can see there, that's the unweighted version. This particular size is a 6.0, which I like to pair up onto my 5 inch paddle tails. As soon as I move to the 6 inch paddle tails, I'll move up to an 8.0 beast hook. You just want that nice large hook, I mean these fish have got big hard mouths and they are ferocious eaters, so you don't have to worry about going for too small of a hook. On the hook, I've got a little speed snap over there. That just makes life very easy for me. I'll explain what that's for now in two seconds. So from the speed snap, obviously I've got my knot that I tie. I then thread a little rubber bead or a plastic bead onto, onto the main line there. And then I've got a barrel swivel, a running bar a barrel swivel. Some guys like to peg them. I don't, uh, I don't see the necessity to peg them, so I like to keep mine free running. But all that little stopper, that little bead or rubber stopper, whatever it is that you use, it just protects your knot from that sinker from damaging your, your knot. So obviously when you're fishing this and you're coming through the rocks and that, this is moving around quite a lot, so you wanna protect that knot. And then with the, the weedless rig, what makes this weedless here, as you can see, I've got that buried in, but you've got the barb of the hook. So normally with an open jig head, you've got that hook that sticks out there and that can get stuck on a whole lot of stuff. So when you're fishing very rocky areas, like in the trans sky, that sort of stuff, you wanna go your weedless rig and then come through your plastic and it just allows you to bury the barb of your hook so you're not going to be getting stuck on rocks or anything like that. As soon as that cob grabs on that, he pushes that down and that hook then gets exposed and yeah, the rest is history. I mean, then, you, then you're onto an awesome fish and enjoying the fight. So from the rig, then just a couple lures that I like to carry with me and this is where the speed snap now comes into, into play. So what I like to do is I'll pre-rig a couple of my favorite lures on, on the hooks already as it is. So this one here is a Berkeley hollow belly 6 inch paddle tail with that 8 beast as I was telling you about. I've got that guy rigged. When I'm on the water, I'll carry a few of these in my pockets because obviously, you know, we're fishing on the edges of, uh, of the rocks and you're wading into pools and getting out to your sandbanks. So unfortunately, you can't carry a tackle bag with you. So just a couple of these in your pocket that are pre-rigged. You know, depending on the conditions out there, if I want to switch up on a color, if I feel something's not working, then all I do on that speed on that speed snap is I snap my current lure off, and then I put another one on. Then I don't have to worry about actually threading the whole lure onto the hook and all of that because that that wastes time. So for me, that works very well. 
you know, hopefully it works for you. Give it a try, see if it works for you. If it does, then yeah, that's gonna be fantastic. And then just a couple of my favorite lures that I like for, for cob, obviously the paddle tails are very key. They give off a lot of vibration and that's what the cob are looking for when they're hunting and when they're sitting in their holes. So vibration is very, very key. Um, so a couple of my favorites is a Berkeley hollow belly paddle tail. I like to carry the five inch and the six inch. This guy here is a six inch. A couple great colors will be your Fire Tiger, which is this particular one here. I also like to carry a motor oil red flick, which is like a nice, a nice dark black color. And then a pink. Pink is always good for cob. And that's no matter where you are along the coastline, whether you're down in Jeffreys Bay or up here in the Transgar, you know, a little further up north in the coast, pink seems to be a very deadly color. So definitely make sure you've got a couple pink paddle tails. A couple of extra options I like to keep. This is a Berkeley Champ Swimmer. Just a slightly smaller profile paddle tail. Yet again, it's got a nice big paddle on the back there, so it's got a nice big strong kick, gives off a good thump, awesome vibrations, and that's what you want for the cob. That's the stuff they key in on. So just awesome little bait this, and it comes in some very cool, realistic, high definition colors. Another option there, yet again, sticking in the paddle tails, this is the Berkeley Powerbait Ripple Shad. Also, this one's just got a slightly smaller tail, yet it's still got a very tight, uh, tight wiggle to it, but it gives off a lot of vibration in the water. It's got some great segments here on the body as well, which just aids in giving that extra vibration in the water, helping those cob find that lure and just key in on it to, to eat it. And then another nice option which I, which I keep with me for rainy days is a bearded grass pig. So this is a very interesting looking, looking lure. Not your most conventional paddle tail, but yet again, with that little skirt on the front, once you've got it rigged and that's swimming through the water, you've got these tentacles which are undulating in the water, just giving off vibrations, you know, looking like a little squid or, or something like that in the water. And it's yet again, those vibrations are key. So the cob keys in on that, and then he's gonna, he's gonna bite down on that. So yeah, that's, that's my basic setup. Yet again, it's obviously something that's not gonna break the bank, you know, very affordable. The sport's becoming very expensive, so we've got to spend our monies wisely. But that's the basic setup. Like I said, very, very easy. Couple paddle tails, just a few owner beast hooks, some decent quality braid, you know, some, uh, some decent fluorocarbon leader. And yeah, and then you're off on your way and you're just gonna then fish away and look for those gullies and those holes and you, you, will, you will come tight. Eventually you will come tight. Oh, that's epic. Looks like a good fish, buddy. Right, you want to come bring him in this yeah. bring him in this channel here. <laughs> Epic! Look at that fish, man. That is a good fish. Ooh. It's a lovely fish. Right, let's bring him around here. Oh, what a fish. Eastern Cape Coddy. Look at that, yes. man! Yes! Oh man, what a start to the morning. Right, a beautiful walk down the beach. We came to some juicy looking rocks with a couple gullies in it. And you know, Ali and myself said, so there has to be a cob or two sitting in there. And uh, yeah, a couple casts in. You know, mate, I think it was like third cast or so. A couple wines of the reel. And this beautiful little guy decided to chomp down on my paddle tail. And he gave me a, a very awesome rev. I mean, oh, so special to come to the wild coast down in the Transkar, Nabucha Eco River Lodge, and come catch these guys. I mean, you, it doesn't get any better than this. Let the battle begin.